Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. Today it's time for another featured formation and today we are in the middle of the Mesozoic era in the Jurassic and we're talking about this, the stump formation. Tectonic and topographic, guys. So now we have a run. Classic red bed. The stump formation consists of a marine deposit. It actually captures a marine transgressive sequence, and we can see some evidence in things like these, like ripple marks. The many interesting layers to be found in the Jurassic and the middle of the Mesozoic era mark a back and forth struggle between it being a continental ecosystem and marine ecosystem. And so we tend to find formations like the Entrada sandstones and similar ones that mark aeolian sand dune environments and beach sediments that now form tall towering cliffs of whitish yellowish and pinkish tones. And if we look adjacent to those layers eventually we'll find the marine layers like that of the stump formation where we see the advancement of the sea back onto the land. And so we find units that have sea creatures. If we continue to look around adjacent to those layers again, we might find ourselves in, other, in another continental terrestrial type ecosystem, maybe a fluvial ecosystem like that of the Morrison Formation, where the dinosaurs walked along riversides. Now, this pink betroidal chert here, also sometimes referred to as welded chert, is a great indicator for us. It tells us that we're near the bottom of the Tidwell member of the Morrison Formation. The Tidwell member is a cross-bedded, ripple-marked uh, sedimentary unit that represents a superlittoral zone. And here in northern Utah, it also serves as an interesting clue. Because if this is the bottom of the Morrison Formation, then just underneath I should be able to find the Stump Formation. The Stump Formation consists of two members. The upper or younger is the Redwater member. And that is a marine-related unit that consists of glauconitic siltstone and limestone that is particularly fossiliferous. And below the Redwater member, we find the lower or older unit referred to as the Curtis member. By examining the microfossils in this member, geologists were able to determine that it is of Oxfordian age. And it is also a light gray greenish unit that contains glauconitic sandstones and limestones that are fossiliferous. Like I found here today, here's a broken chunk. Um, what you can find is, it is really the definition of fossiliferous. It's full of many types of marine fossils. Here's another piece. It's just the whole entire thing is full of these marine shelled organisms. It contains bivalves, brachiopods, echnoderms, and cephalopods, particularly an interesting assemblage of belemnites that can be found. Now these deposits tend to be a grayish and greenish color, and that greenish tone comes from the mineral presence of glauconite. Glauconite is an iron potassium phyllosilicate, and it's interesting because it is an indicator of a marine environment. In fact, it's further evidence of a transgressive sequence. And if you can see in the middle, there's a slab there of the ripple marks that are pretty common in these stump formation layers. Now these were certainly near shore deposits and we can tell because of the ripple marks and the markings of bioturbation. Bioturbation refers to the markings left behind from the activities of different life forms. And this can be anything from say an arthropod, digging or walking across the surface, to dinosaurs that are also tearing up mud and making impressions. Now beds of a similar composition and age have actually yielded pterosaur trackways and sauropod tracks. Now if we look at these layers you can see they're really thin pieces right so like super paper thin and these are called laminae. Aside from that glauconite and clays and quartz another mineral you'll often find in these layers is gypsum. Here we have some really nice crystals. We can find outcrops of the stump formation in places such as South Dakota and Wyoming over to Idaho and down to Utah. The type section locality is found around the Wyoming-Idaho border. All right, partner, rock hammer. Partner, sleeping on the job. 